Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordon and ESCOM Chairperson Jabu Mabuza on Tuesday provided an update on South Africa's power crisis. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights of the media briefing. Hi Terence. What were the main messages that emerged from the media briefing? I think the main message is that uh, there's an understanding from ESCOM and, and government that this is a crisis and that people are frustrated that there is a resumption of load shedding and it has, is having an impact on society, especially on the psychology of society. I think it's really confidence sapping. And uh, there was also the message that work is underway to try and one, diagnose the full extent of the problem and the crisis, as well as when it's clear what the problem is to try and communicate that a bit more effectively. So I think really what we're hearing from Eskom is that this lack of maintenance at the coal-fired power stations over many years is really coming back to bite us at the moment. So we don't have very high demand in South Africa at the moment. It's around the 30,000 uh, megawatt level every day, probably a little bit below. And we have an installed base for the Eskom fleet of over 45,000 megawatts. And yet we aren't able to meet that demand because there's been a, a calamitous collapse of the performance of the uh, existing fleet of coal-fired power stations and the new build fleet that's emerging at Kusili and, uh, and Madupi is not operating, uh, the, the units that have come into commercial operation yep. are not operating anyway near their rated capacity or their nameplate, so less than 50%. So those together, the breakdowns as well as the underperformance of Madupi and Kusili are the main reason why we have inadequate supply. This has been exacerbated in recent weeks by obviously this very large cyclone that hit um, uh, uh, Mozambique and Zimbabwe, which took down the lines from Corobasa, so we lost capacity from there, as well as the lack at the moment of shortage of diesel. And the reason for that is um, there were a lot of questions around planning, but there seems to have been a much harder running of the open cycle gas uh, turbine fleet, that's both the Eskom fleet as well as the IPP fleet, than was uh, initially planned for, and they've really depleted their diesel stocks. So we had a situation now where we can't meet very modest, modest des the demand, and we're entering into the higher demand winter months. Uh, there is a number, of, there are uh, units out for planned maintenance, but really the big problem is the unplanned outages, the breakdowns and together those are taking uh, out 17,000 megawatts of, um, of capacity. And if you add that you need to have a 2,000 megawatt reserve, system reserve to keep the whole system in balance, and then you don't have the diesel to close the gap, you have to resort to uh, the worst case scenario, and that is load shedding. And we load shedding at a fairly high level. At uh, stage four load shedding, it's over 4,000 megawatts is taken out through rotational cuts, and all of us or feeling it. So that is what they're communicating uh, and I think that what that was what they were trying to okay. achieve at the briefing is to try and get a, a feeling of where they knew uh, what where the problems are to share those and where they still didn't know where the problems are to say we, we are working on them. What is the prognosis for the power system for the weeks and months to come? Again they were a, a little bit shy to give a very firm time frame in terms of remedying the situation. There is this uh, technical task team that's been appointed. It's an independent group uh, of engineers that are going, that's currently going around the coal-fired power stations. It's been highly criticized. Why do we need another task team? The explanation given, uh, or the analogy given by Minister Praveen Gordon was, we, we look in the mirror every morning <laughs> before we go to work, and this is to try and hold up a mirror and to see whether maybe we haven't missed something to get that outside independent view. But I think they are waiting a little bit on that before they give any sort of prognosis, firm prognosis. Uh, different um, scenarios have been muted in the public. One is that this is going to be here for at least two years, and it may be. Uh, uh, but on a, in a radio talk show, the CEO, Pakamani Hadebe, indicated things that should look a lot better within months, with ar in around the six-month period. But I think they, they, were, they were not very forthcoming or they didn't want to put their head on a block in terms of the prognosis. At the moment we know it's, it's dire and we're living through it. Uh, but I think once the diesel ships arrive, that will give us some relief. 
and we may not have this, this sort of high level of load shedding, but every time there's anything that's, that's maybe unexpected, so we know there's a lot of outages, but over and above uh, what is out, I think we are vulnerable to load shedding. Are there any short to medium interventions that could be implemented to help alleviate the electricity supply constraints? Yeah, the, the immediate one, I suppose, is to get the diesel, and I think that's going to be arriving quite shortly. Um, that's very expensive, but it's, uh, it's one of the remedies or the levers that Eskom can pull to make sure that there's not as much load shedding in the system. And then the, the second short-term, uh, medium-term thing is to actually um, ease the pressure on Eskom around procurement systems. And uh, that was, uh, it's unclear what the model's going to look like, but uh, it's, they've approached the Auditor General as well as uh, the National Treasury for some sort of condemnation of, a, of a, an accelerated process for procurement during this crisis, so a crisis model, so that they can get the spare parts they can, uh, and the different equipment that they need to start remedying uh, this uh, situation. And that, I think, is quite an important thing, because I think sometimes these processes do stand in the way of making uh, you know, urgent decisions. On the other hand, they're there to try and stop corruption and malfeasance, so it's a balancing act. So I think so that's another short-term remedy. The third one is to reinstate uh, what you would have thought was obvious, is the preventative maintenance analysis of the boiler tubes at the power station. Now these boiler tubes, there's hundreds of kilometers in each boiler, and they, are, they have a tendency to leak if you're not properly maintained. And there was a contract in place for many years that gave a predictive analysis of where the leaks could be uh, becoming a problem, where there were vulnerabilities, and therefore you were able to do uh, almost sort of part of your routine maintenance, you were able to deal with a lot of these boiler tubes leaks. That contract we found out this week was expired 18 months ago and was not renewed. And uh, that has meant that uh, Eskom's shooting in the dark with regard to its boiler tubes. We've had massive amounts of leaks. You know, we know in December it was very much about the coal problem. Uh, the current uh, unplanned outages seem very much about the boiler tube leaks. And it was, as Eskom admitted, very much within their hands. And they let that slip through the cracks. And they're now urgently scrambling to reinstate that contract. But obviously, that's going to ta take time to go and do uh, the sort of uh, analysis and the uh, diagnosis of the boiler tubes across the fleet. So that is a very disappointing. And I think it's not something that can be remedied too quickly. But really, there are eight units at different power stations that are entirely down as a result of boiler tube leaks and it got getting so out of hand that they needed to go and fix it. So it's a real problem and the one that they, they are paying close attention to. In the medium to longer term, we have a supply problem. Um, no matter what you read sometimes and see on social media that Eskom's got all this capacity, and I, I was speaking about it earlier about this nameplate capacity being 45 to 40, uh, 48,000 megawatts, we have a supply crisis in South Africa and therefore we need to start moving towards adding supply. And we can only do that once the integrated resource plan is in place and is bedded down. Unfortunately, that uh, has not been updated since 2010. We had a pro several processes try update it. We were under the impression that this early this year we would have a firm I integrated resource plan in the market because that is necessary for the, in the, the RPP office to begin the procurement processes to add new supply into the system. The other thing I think that's a, a medium-term remedy is to sort out the issue around embedded generation and the regulations around that, because that's a, a fairly quick win, and a lot of capacity can be added at a household as well as a commercial uh, premises uh, type level that can alleviate stresses. The problem there is that we need a model for remunerating the, the municipalities and the distributors that does not really uh, erode or put them into a sort of utility death spiral. So we have to meet, work with some urgency to sort out those regulations. So without the RP and without sorting out those regulations, that supply gap is not going to be closed because you can't rely on Eskom, who has proven quite inadequate with its current projects in terms of getting those up and running uh, effectively. You have to rely on other sources of supply so that we're not beholden to one this one big uh, behemoth, Eskom, and when it fails, we all uh, catch a cold. 
So I think those are in the medium to long term, or the medium to sh short to medium term, we really have to get that RP out. We have to start procurement processes and we must sort out the regulations for embedded generation to add new sources of supply. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.